How are you guys tonight, huh? Come on, let's have some fun here. What's going on? A packed theater on a Friday morning, it begs the question, does anyone here have a real job? <laughs> if you don't, don't worry, I don't either. Uh, my name is Kayvon Moezi, and I am uh, happy to be here. My first question for you, what would you do if you found out about a brand new holiday that everyone else already seemed to know about? What if, as an adult, your parents sat you down and told you about Christmas for the very first time? You'd be pretty upset, wouldn't you? Well, that's what happened to me, and it led to me eventually becoming homeless. Thought I would tell you about that today. Now, I first want to say to all the people who are from out of town, I was born and raised right here in Reno, Nevada, and it is Nevada, not Nevada. Do we know that? Do we know that? For some reason, our state's the only one that has two pronunciations. I don't know why. Nobody calls it Nebraska. <laughs> I've never heard Alaska right next to Canada, so it's not Nevada. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I was born and raised right here in Nevada, which isn't that unusual, but what is is where my dad is from. He's from Iran, a country in the Middle East. And he moved here after uh, the revolution, which is not that uncommon. A lot of people left the Middle East but they didn't come to Reno. <laughs> they went to San Francisco, they went to Los Angeles. I always wondered, and my dad never gave me a straight answer, how we ended up in this beautiful community. So I had to come up with my own theory. <laughs> I feel like the plane was leaving Iran. It was headed to San Francisco. It stopped in Reno to fuel up. My dad got off the plane, took too long doing something or other. <laughs> he missed his connection. And I, I was raised, even though I have a weird name, Kayvon, I was raised very regular American. It was t-ball, baseball, camping trips, Boy Scouts, school. My brother and I, we knew nothing else. My dad wanted to fit in in this culture. As soon as he moved here, he bought a cowboy hat. <laughs> he bought a pickup truck. He married a blonde woman, and he told people he was Latino. So he was really, <laughs> he was really trying to fit in. I made up the last part, but you get the point. So I knew everything that you guys know. I was very happy. I was very comfortable. I went to the University of Nevada, Reno. I graduated, and then I wanted to pursue comedy, so I went to Los Angeles, and that's where I found millions of other Persians. And they accepted me, but I didn't know anything about it. I had to learn about my culture in my mid-20s. There were now stereotypes I had to fit into. I never had stereotypes. I'd always been regular white, but now I had some cool stuff, like Persians are known for uh, expensive clothing, Mercedes Benz, and what I liked about being half Persian and half regular white, as I like to call it, is I could turn it up or down depending on the situation. <laughs> like a thermostat, you know, if I go to a nightclub, I tend to turn the Persian up to full blast. <laughs> I don't just walk in, I have a v-neck all of a sudden pointing really low, a gold chain, I have an accent. I think the accent is key. Because if you're going to approach a girl, it's better to be like, hi, how are you, what you are doing? It just sounds good. <laughs> it just sounds very good compared to like my regular white voice. I sound like Owen Wilson day to day. That's boring. <laughs> Ladies, who are you going to go uh, back to the place with? Hi, how are you? Or hey, what's going on? We should hang out sometime if you're available. <laughs> yeah. We can go back to my place. Mi casa, su casa. No, that's... So I could turn the Persian up if I needed to or turn it down. Sometimes I turn it off, like when I go to the airport. Off, off, <laughs> off. The TSA knows me not as Kayvon Moezy, but as Kevin Moezy. That's who I am <laughs> when I get to the airport. Uh, I was happy to be in Los Angeles. I was doing a lot of stand-up comedy shows. Persians kept inviting me to do their private events. And one of my buddies said, hey, uh, what are you planning on doing this year for New Year? I said, well, it's March. I think we have nine months to plan. <laughs> I don't know if this is a priority right now. He said, no, you idiot. I'm talking about Persian New Year. And I said, what? He said, you don't know about this holiday? And I didn't. Turns out Persian New Year is like the greatest hits of all holidays. It's Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, all rolled into one. It's a birthday party for Mother Nature. It is awesome, and my dad never told me about it. I was pretty upset. I felt like he owed me about 25 years of back holiday child support. 
kids get gifts, they get candy, they get new clothes. I experience none of it. But instead of getting mad, I decided to go learn about Persian New Year. And as a comedian, it was kind of easy. I set up 17 different shows from across the nation, including Canada, Florida, New York. I said, I'm coming, I'm going to do comedy there, I'm going to bring some cameras, I'm hiring a whole crew, we're making a documentary, I want to invite other people to learn about Persian New Year with me. Pretty good idea. The problem was, I could not afford any of that. <laughs> so I had to make the ultimate sacrifice, which I was recently told is dying in battle. I did not do that. <laughs> so I made the second most ultimate sacrifice. I became homeless. I figured that would help my production budget if I wasn't paying extraordinary amounts of rent on the beach. So I packed everything into a little storage shed. I stayed with friends and family when I needed to, but my life was going to be on the road for the next six to nine months. And that is how I got a bigger budget to hire a cameraman, the crew, the editing, the software, and I was going to make the movie. And what I learned about this in my travels was each stop, I learned something new about what being Persian is. And it was pretty interesting. Persian Empire, uh, you know, it used to actually span all of human civilization. Uh, it was responsible for innovations that we all still know and use today. So it's not that weird, this weird far off Middle Eastern culture. As a matter of fact, they're responsible for the windmill, brain surgery, pajamas, we know about that stuff. <laughs> Better yet, the birthday cake, ice cream, fruit punch, and the tambourine. So hey, you can't party without Persians. They started this stuff. <laughs> or more recently, Hot Pockets and eBay. <laughs> I don't recommend buying Hot Pockets on eBay, they, so don't get that confused right there. Uh, it was actually fascinating, and that's just the stuff about the culture. But what I learned about the holiday was even more interesting. The holiday uh, is celebrated by over 300 million people worldwide. How I never heard about it, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Barack Obama, George Bush, they've all addressed it each year in a presidential speech. And more importantly, the little facets of the holiday are stuff that are not that uncommon to us today. For instance, one of the uh, characters of Persian New Year, or Nowruz, as it's called, is a guy that has a gray beard. He brings candy and gifts to the children that behave. His name is Amu Nowruz, or Uncle New Year. Does that sound like anyone we kind of already know? Well, that's Amu Nowruz, and well, that's the guy we're familiar with, Old Saint Nick. So uh, if this was Us Weekly magazine, we'd say, who wore it best? <laughs> I don't know who wore it best, but I do know who wore it first. Amu Nowruz predates Santa Claus by 3,000 years. The next thing you'll find when you go to a Persian New Year event is grass on a table when you walk in, and then a painted egg next to the grass. The grass represents rebirth. The painted egg represents fertility of the spring new year. Uh, does that sound like anything we might have heard of? <laughs> yeah, Easter. It predates Easter by about 3,000 years. So I was very excited to learn this stuff, and uh, it really taught me that, you know what, it was pretty cool that my dad never told me about Persian New Year because I got the chance to experience it on my own as an adult and maybe appreciate it a little bit more. I was given advice from celebrities and scholars all across the nation. It was probably one of the best years of my life, and eventually I ended up making the movie that I wanted to make, No Ruse. The best part about it is I submitted it to a few film festivals. Someone liked it. It ended up winning a huge prize at a film festival, so I was pretty excited about that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So the question I started off with is, what would you do if you found out about a new holiday that everyone else knew about but nobody told you about? Well, hopefully you wouldn't get mad, you wouldn't pout and cry. Instead, you might consider becoming homeless for a little while, hiring a camera crew, filming the journey, and sharing it with the rest of us, and you just might win an award for it. And if you'll do that, I'm sure the rest of us would love to learn about it because we all need a new reason to party and celebrate life. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Well, then I hope you'll do that. Thank you for listening, and Happy New Year. I appreciate it, you guys. Thank you.